in Acts chapter number 20, and we're going to start reading down in verse number 7. The Bible says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. There was many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together, and there was set in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him, and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, he had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till the break of day, and so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for the reading of your word. Lord, we're thankful again to be here tonight. Lord, I ask you just help me. Lord, what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, just get preach it with your power and strength, Lord, and be a help to each and every one of us here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I'm going to look at by way of introduction, and Brother Phil already alluded to it before he came up here and started singing, is we see that Paul was preaching. Uh, uh, you know, God don't send us here um, to church just to um, fellowship with one another. He doesn't sing us here while I enjoy the fellowship, while I enjoy the singing, while I enjoy the time we get to spend together. It should be our desire to come and hear preaching. Um, I, I believe with all my heart that our, our pastor gets the mind of God, whether he's to preach, if he's gone and who's to preach so we should show up looking forward to preaching can i say i believe these people and these disciples showed up ready for preaching for the fact that they stayed there all night long uh but we won't get into all that and my, uh, how quick we are ready to leave um too many times i'm afraid we come to hear preaching uh but we're already looking forward to when we're going to get out from the moment that we walked in and instead we should come looking forward to just the preaching of the word of god and allow god to talk to us and help us um, through the preaching and the Word of God. Not only do we see the preaching, we also see Paul's lack of concern in verse number 7. What does it say? It says, And when they come together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. So the way I read that, Brother Phil, is he's getting ready to leave and go out tomorrow. He's ready to leave. He's accomplished what he's going to accomplish, and he's gone there that night to preach, Brother Jim, and he don't care. It's already midnight now, and he keeps right on going. We could go on and read a little bit later. He ain't worried about going home and getting some sleep, Brother Phil. He's not worried about going home and finding a place to lay down his head. He's just worried about doing what God wants him to do, what God is sending there to do, and get the Word of God to those people. And he has a lack of concern for the fact that he's leaving the next day and trying to get back and get some rest, and he's just interested in his preaching. But in that preaching, we see someone perched. In verse number 9, it says, And there sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. Well, we'll get into that part in just a second. So we see Eutychus there perched up in the window. Now, I don't know why. I, I don't know if the room was full, so he had to sit in the window to see. I don't know if maybe, you know, the verse before that, I read something that talked about the verse before that. says, And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. Maybe he was hot. I mean, you imagine you put everybody together in a room that's got a bunch of lights going on. It's probably got pretty warm up in there, Brother Peter. So he might have been hot. He might have been sitting next to the window to cool himself down a little bit. I don't know, but regardless, we see him perched on that window. And then we see the problem that arises in the fact that it says being fallen into a deep sleep, and as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell from the third loft and was taken up dead. I would say that would be a problem. The fact that this young man sitting in that window has now fallen out and fallen dead. Now, can I, I would imagine what would happen, what we think in our mind would happen. That would have, been, that would have killed the service, Brother Phil. That would have been the end of it. We got this young man just fell out of the window and he's dead. And that, that's pretty much it. We might as well pack it up and go to the house. No, instead, it tells us that Paul went down, picked him up, said, don't worry, his life is still in him. His, his life is still in him. Slow down a little bit. And his life is still in him, picks him up, brings him back up, breaks bread, eats a little bit more, and sets and preaches and fellowships all the way until the break of day, Brother Donald. He wasn't worried about the fact that what had just happened. See, too many times we, we come to service and we allow things around us to affect us instead of just getting in on what God has. We Somebody gets up and goes to the bathroom, we automatically notice. A little baby starts to whimper, starts to cry, we automatically notice. We are too quick and too easy to get our focus off of what God has for us instead of just focusing on what God has. Well, the man of God standing up here and preaching to us and he spent all this time studying, we should be focused on that 
that and, and try to tune out everything that's going on. Uh, th there's times I've had somebody, like, this isn't always, I, I no, where do you see a halo, Brother Phil? There's nothing there, okay? There are times I can sit there and I'm the same way. Before you know it, you see every single person that's getting up. And there's times I've had somebody say, well, I wonder what happened to so-and-so. They got up and left in the middle of service. I didn't even notice. I had no idea. That's how we should always be. Be focused in on the preaching, focused in on what God has, that that problem doesn't bother us so much. When we see the perplexed, I am perplexed here in verse number 12, and they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. Why would they not be comforted? That just, that confounds me on why they would not be comforted that this young man was brought to them alive. But what I want to focus on is I want you to think a little bit about this young man sitting here in this window. And he's sitting in that window, it said, and it says being fallen into a deep sleep. So I can just imagine, Brother Donald, that he's fallen asleep. Now we look, and we've heard this talked about before, and we know this is the case when you have the, the David and Goliath, and David throws those smooth stones and it hits Goliath in the forehead, and, and by all accounts he should fall backwards. And our pastors talked about this, and you read that, why does he not fall backwards? God evidently smacks him in the back of the head because he falls forward. And when there's certain things that you are doing, you are just going to fall that way. Come here, get up, come here for a second, Brother Lucas. Now, if I ask, I want you to face that way, and I want you to lean back here on me. Now, if Brother Lucas, keep leaning, keep leaning. Don't, don't, you got to trust me. You're not trusting me. I can let go, and you ain't going nowhere. So if Lucas actually trusted me, and he wanted to lean back here on me, and I was let go, what way is he going to fall, Brother Brian? He's going to fall this way, right? Go ahead, sit back down, buddy. So you would think that if, if Eutychus is really in on the preaching, if the preaching's good, what do we tend to do? But we are sitting on the edge of our seat, man, it is getting good, Brother Brian, and, and we are excited. But instead, too many times, we're just sitting back, just not giving a second thought, and just let whatever happens, happens. And that's what causes this young man then to fall out the window because he could have been sitting on the window. Now, I, I understand they're, they're, in, they're in the upper chamber, so they're high up, in the, high up off the ground. But if he had been leaning, Brother Phil, interested in the preaching, he might have just fell from there to there. I mean, I don't know how high the window was. That's not too far to fall. I'm guessing you wouldn't die if you fell that far right there. You wouldn't fall down. So instead of being leaned into and really paying attention... Yeah. He was leaning out. And what I want to preach with God's help this evening is leaning the wrong way. Leaning the wrong way. Now, you have to understand, I am somebody who I don't ask a lot of questions, okay? So if you notice, all the, deck, the fall decorations are out, and everything looks beautiful as always, because Miss Annette always does such a wonderful job. Did you notice something that's missing? The scarecrows. I heard somebody say it. We didn't have the scarecrows in here. And what did our pastor always talk about the scarecrows? They're where they're supposed to be and all those things and all that. Eutychus is in a good place that night. We can be sitting in church. We can be exactly where we're supposed to be and leaning the wrong way. What happens when we lean the wrong way? Can I say, first off, if we're leaning the wrong way, sin doesn't bother us. I'm about to fry up here. You always can tell when you get good and nervous because you get super hot. Can I say, when you're leaning the wrong way, sin doesn't bother you. Now, the Bible tells me in James chapter number 4 and verse 17, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. I'm afraid what we have done, Brother Phil, is we have made sin, well, I don't kill anybody, and, and, and I don't steal anything, Brother Jim, and I don't do these top four or five things, so therefore I'm a pretty good person. No, the Bible says, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him in his sin. So therefore, when we get to where we're leaning the wrong way, when we're leaning just a little bit outside of where we're supposed to be, it doesn't bother me to go and run somebody down the road. It doesn't bother me to go to Brother Donald and talk about Brother Ray like he's a dog, and I just go on about my day. It doesn't bother me, look, and I'm not saying if you're sick, I pray for those that are sick, those that can't be here, but it doesn't bother me to sit at home on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night and skip church just because I want to. Just because I, I, I went Sunday morning and, hey, I was at Sunday school and I did this and did that, and I don't need Sunday night service. When we're leaning the wrong way, that doesn't bother us. I have a real question and real wonder, I guess you would say, on somebody that can do certain things and it don't bother them. You should, if your life is given to Christ and you trust Jesus, you do certain things that they should bother you and you know that they are wrong. Can I share this? I hope this don't get me in trouble. This might get me in trouble because I didn't discuss this part with my wife. 
Each and every one of us have a sin nature. Every one of us. I don't care who you are, what level you're on, or how sweet and innocent you think you might be. I'm going to give you an example. Miss Tina called me this morning, Brother Ray, at about quarter after nine. I'm at work, I answer the phone, I said, hello. She goes, so school just called. I'm like, okay. And told me Bella wasn't at school. Keep in mind, Bella got on the bus at about 6.50 this morning, Brother Clint. And I said, and? She goes, well, they told me she wasn't at school, and they could tell by my reaction. They said, well, by your reaction, she should be at school. Yes, she should be at school. And they then proceeded to, I guess, put her on hold and accidentally hung up on her. Not real sure what happened there because she tried to call back twice, and they didn't answer. So she calls Bella's main teacher, Miss Stone. Asked Miss Stone what's going on. So evidently, a peer walked Bella to history class, Brother Jim. Bella got to history class. Don't know if she just didn't want to do history today, Brother Phil, or if she just wasn't interested because the pair because the, um, pair wasn't in there or what happened, but she decided she was done with history, Brother Brian, and she got up and went to a different class. So whether the teacher, I guess, wasn't in there, when they took attendance, Bella wasn't there, so she was marked absent. Can I say Bella immediately knew when the teacher asked her why she did it? She said you could tell by her reaction she knew that she had done something wrong. Bella will tell you she is sorry because she knows she don't want you mad at her. She knows that she did something wrong. I don't know how much of it she understands. All even, even Bella, that we think just sweet, innocent, how much does she understand, has that sin nature that she's going to do things that are wrong. I asked her last night, we come home from deer hunting. Bella, did you vacuum your room? Yep. When Bella vacuums her room, she always takes the vacuum and pushes it into my room because I'll do our bedroom next. Vacuum wasn't in our bedroom, Brother Donald. So I opened up the closet door. I said, you vacuumed your room. Yep. So you vacuumed your room. You wrapped the cord back all the way around the vacuum and put it back away. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Bella? And you can always tell. You can tell by her reaction because it's yep, and then it's probably. And ask her one more time. Bella, did you vacuum your room? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bella, are you supposed to lie? I don't think so. Did you vacuum your room today? I don't think so then why did you lie to begin with? See, we all have that sin nature. And when we get to where we're leaning the wrong way, it don't bother us. It bothers her. She does not like to think that you're mad at her. She does not like to think that you're upset at her. She wants to tell you she's sorry. Does it bother us? Does it bother us when we do things? If we can go a, a, a two or three days or four days or whatever it may be without studying the Word of God, does that bother us? Because the Bible tells us we are to do that. And it tells us, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin. Therefore, it's sinful. If we know we're supposed to be praying, if you're going to tell, brother, if, if you're going to stop by after church and tell whoever it may be, hey, I'm praying for your brother, praying for your mom, if you don't do that... You know to do good. Why did you tell him you was going to pray for him? Yeah. Leaning the wrong way, sin doesn't bother us. When we're leaning the wrong way, we'll listen to suggestions. I've told this story many a times. It, it, it's coming around. I finally quit getting asked. I had no brother one time. We would go deer hunting, and, and we'd always have breakfast every opening day. Uh, there's something you ought to get, get in on, Brother Peter. You need to tell him you need a good big breakfast, man. There's nothing like just sausage and biscuits and gravy. We saw about deer hunting before, before service. We would always get together and on opening day have a big breakfast. And we begin to talk about when everybody's going to be able to hunt that week and who has vacation or whatever it may be. And I'd say, well, you know, I'm going to go all day Saturday, but I won't be going tomorrow. You know, you don't have to go to church every time the doors are open. No, I don't have to. I don't have to. I want to. But too many times we will listen to that suggestion. You know, and he's right. It's not going to hurt anything if I don't. You know, i tell you what I'll do. I'll even just go hunting on Sunday morning. And if God blesses me to shoot a deer, then I'm just not meant to go. That's what it'll be. And if, I'm, if, if God don't want me to miss service, I won't see a deer. And we'll have those things come through our mind because we'll listen to suggestions that the world makes. Hey, it's okay. You don't have to go do this. Or you don't have to go do that. You just do whatever you want to do today. You, you've spent enough time in church. You've invested enough into this. We will listen to too, too many suggestions of the world instead of just doing what God tells us to do in the Word of God. When we're leaning the wrong way, first, sin don't bother us. The second, we'll listen to suggestions. And third, we will stop being affected. Hebrews chapter number, 11, Hebrews chapter number 3 and verse 13, it says, But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Amen. 
How often are we become hardened to the deceitfulness of sin? How often can the word of, can the man of God stand up here and preach to us? And it pretty much, I'm not going to say it goes in one ear out the other. It might affect us a little bit, but it doesn't affect us the way it should. And I'm not trying to sound rude or crude, and, and I know I have the Wednesday night crowd here, but you can tell some aren't affected because how many times our pastor stood up here and preached about coming to church and preached about being faithful in God's church, and you can't find him with a bloodhound on Sunday night. You can't ever find him on a Wednesday night. Why? Because it don't affect us. If we can sit and listen to our pastor preach or whoever stands behind this pulpit and preach and it doesn't affect us, it might be because we're leaning the wrong way. It might be because we're leaning, we're looking too forward to getting out than we are to getting in. Because it stops having, a, we've become just too hard-hearted. And, and look, I, I, you know, even Mike, Brother Mike even said this on Sunday night when he mentioned, you know, that whatever it is, would it be that bad eight-letter word? I'm not going to say it because, you know, even Brother Mike said it. As soon as he said it, you just go, just, you know. But how many times do we hear certain things being said and we just immediately want to bull up? Well, he, he's trying to talk about me. No, he probably isn't. Can I tell you, not, not one, I'm not going to tell you it won't ever happen. And I'm not going to tell you that I haven't thought about uh, 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 preaching at the jail, Brother Phil. I'll sit down and God will give me something. I'll be like, God, is that really what you want? Because there's nothing here about salvation. These people at the jail need salvation. I, I got to have something about salvation. God say, no, this is what you need to preach. This is what you need to preach. And you might get over there and everybody might be saved. They might need something else. I've never sat down and prepared a message and think, you know what, I better preach this because Brother Jim's probably going to be there tonight and he's going to need this. I've never had that thought. So I would bet our pastor probably doesn't either. He's going to preach what God has him. So why then are we, instead of allowing it to affect us, we want to get all bulled up and mad when something is said, whether it be something from Scripture or whether it be something in the world, and we immediately want to begin to uh, 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 just get all mad and say, well, he's preaching. he just needs to get off of that, and he needs to move on to somebody else. Let me tell you what Brother Donald's been doing and get on him instead of getting on me because it don't affect us the way it should. When we're leaning the wrong way, it doesn't affect us. See, it should get down into our heart and we say, you know what, that, that's me right there. I need to do better. He's talking about me. He's, he, he might not know, but he's actually stepping on my toes and I need to do a better job about whatever it is, get something out of my life and allow it to affect us. Amen. I got to slow down. We're going to get done super quick. As per normal. Can I say the fourth thing when we're leaning the wrong way is we'll slip off to sleep. It says Eutychus there, it said he sat in a nam, uh, young man named Eutychus being followed into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep. And we'll get into that sunk down part here in just a minute. But it talked about the fact that he fell asleep. In Mark chapter 13, in verses 33 through 37, it says, Take ye heed, watch, and pray. For you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or the cock crowing in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you all, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Have we lost focus? Have we just kind of drifted off to sleep and lost focus on the fact that Jesus is coming back? Do we not, you know, do we not know and understand just how truthfully close that is? And we talked about it, and Brother Tommy gave it, and I mentioned it in prayer. Everybody through this auditorium tonight could have mentioned lost friends, lost loved ones, lost co-workers, people that we know that are lost. But yet I wonder if God, if Jesus Christ was to return the very next instant, how many of us would he find sleeping when it comes to his return? Now, we, we, I understand we're all awake and we're sitting in the house of God tonight, but how much are we sleeping and how much have we lost focus when it comes to the things of God? Can I say this? And, and I, I've, God has dealt, me with, dealt with me all day with this part right here of me trying to want to make sure I say things the right way and, and just I, I don't want to sound mean and I, I don't want to give anything out that's not appropriate, but you look at the things going on in this world. You can't turn the TV on without seeing is some type of homosexual couple on anything anymore. I've noticed now you can't even watch, I usually don't watch commercials. You can't even watch commercials anymore, Brother Donald, without having you seen a man and a man in the house or something together. It's got to be ridiculous. Where did that, that all didn't just happen overnight. 
You know, I can remember growing up, and, and, and this is just growing up, and I, you know, I grew up kind of in the time Brother Doug talked about. You know, somebody mentioned that, and you might take them out behind the building and knock them upside the head and, and go on about your day. But things were still discussed back then, and I, I want to say, Brother Jim, I just kind of remember the thing I would hear a lot of times coming from churches or Christians, you keep whatever you do in the bedroom in your bedroom, just leave me out of it. Because we didn't want to preach about it being sin. Just leave us out of it. And it'll be all right. And then it has turned into now you can't watch a single TV show without something in it. And then it has turned into all the stuff that they're going at now. And you see what's going on in the work. Can I say, I was listening to something today and I heard this and I was like, no, that's exactly right. Why do you see all this nonsense geared to our kids? Because they're easy to catch. They're easy to manipulate. When we're not careful, they're easy to have them in class or have them in school. And I'm not telling you not to send your kids to school. Don't misunderstand that. But we, we have them and they're easy to manipulate. And we can get them to believe anything. We can get them to believe that they're an animal or get them to believe that this boy should be a girl or the girl should be a boy. And we get them to believe all these things and they prey upon that. All the while, we're sleeping and letting it go on. All the while, we see everything that happens and we just let it go because why? It doesn't affect my life. It doesn't affect my daily walk. It's not affecting me per se. You know, I have, I have one that's already out of high school. And I have one that's, uh, you know, that might be in high school, but she's not around all those other ones, so to speak, maybe the way you think. Or it's just, it doesn't affect our daily walk. Look, I'm a blessed person. I have a great job and I have a wonderful home and a, a good car and a great husband or great wife and great kids. And it don't affect us. So we're just kind of asleep to all that's going on around us. Can I say that is to me that goes right back to the sin doesn't bother us. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We're not willing to make a stand. We might as well say we're just asleep to everything that's going on. Can I tell you, and I have given this a lot of thought and a lot of prayer. You know, you have an election coming up on Tuesday night, don't, or on Tuesday. Uh, don't forget to vote. If, if you don't know the two issues that Brother Doug talked about, you can see me after service. I can explain those two issues for you. But can I say that something that I have found myself since moving up here, and I don't remember voting like this any time in Grant County. They might have had it, but I lived out in the country, so we didn't have a Mount Zion City Council down there. Uh, but something that I noticed up here, you always have all that stuff, the city council and all this. Can I say those people, it matters? Because I remember not too long ago seeing something about union, and I don't remember what it was about not being able to, um, uh, uh, oh, heck, I can't think of the word now, of not being able to show favorites. It wasn't favoritism. I'm trying to think of the word I'm looking for. But not being able to just show favoritism, whatever, to people who might be homosexual or this or that and, and do certain things, have prejudices to them and stuff like that. Because you couldn't do that. And it was like a city council thing that voted to put in or make an ordinance or whatever about it. All those things make a difference. Because sometimes they're going to start on that level and think that their things matter and just slowly move their way up. And before you know it, they're a knucklehead that's in the White House that's wanting to say everything is okay. See, we should be praying carefully about anybody. And hey, if you don't know who they are, just don't vote for them. But too many times and too many things going on in this world, we're asleep to because it doesn't affect our personal walk. It doesn't affect me personally because everything in my little bubble is wonderful. And we might as well just be asleep to it. We might as well be asleep to it because God's going to come back. God's gonna, Jesus is going to return and he's going to find us sleeping as it talked about and not doing what we're supposed to do. Not spreading the gospel, not standing up for right or wrong, and allowing just whatever wants to go on, go on. Can I say this lastly? When we're leaning the wrong way, in verse number 9 again, it says, And there set in the window a certain man, a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. So in reading that, I could be wrong. I couldn't find anything that really explained it one way or another. But it says, being fallen into a deep sleep. So I could imagine this young man sitting up there in the window. We're going to pretend this is the window for a minute. And he's just sitting there and he's just kind of fell asleep. 
And as Paul just kept on preaching and kept on preaching, and he just finally, I guess you would have, what is it, your REM sleep or whatever, when you're just out. You know what I mean? You are just out. And he's sitting there asleep, and he's probably, you know, catching himself. You know, he's leaning the wrong way. Probably knows he's going to fall out the window catching himself, and then finally just, boom, he's gone. Can I say, when we're leaning the wrong way, we're eventually going to get sunken. When you look at Jonah, Jonah in chapter 1 and verse 3, what did Jonah do? He went down to Joppa. In Jonah chapter 1 and verse number 5, he then went down into the sides of the ship. And in Jonah chapter 2 and verse number 3, after he's been thrown overboard and that the great fish swallows him up, he talks about he was into the deep. You know, as, when we lean the wrong way, everything might seem okay for a while, but eventually you're going to get sunken. This young man sat there and had talked about it. He said he, was, he had fallen into a deep sleep. So my guess is us, he was asleep. He was out, he was sleeping, he was having himself a good time. And as Paul was long preaching, so Paul had went on and continued on to preach. It wasn't bothering Paul that that man was sitting up there asleep a bit. He finally had had enough and he fell off into such a deep sleep that he fell off the window ledge from the third loft and fell down and was taken up dead. Can I say when we're leaning the wrong way, you're eventually going to get sunken. Can I say, I, I, I'm not telling you that nobody's been like this, because maybe there is somebody out there. But I don't believe there's any kids that said, you know what, I'm going to grow up and I'm going to be a drug addict. I want to grow up and I want to be an alcoholic. I want to grow up and I'm going to do this. I would believe there's none of us sitting here that say, you know what, I can't wait because in six months from now, I ain't going to church anymore. Brother Doug's going to make me mad, or Brother Donald's going to make me mad, or whoever's going to make me mad, and, and I think I'm just going to quit church. No, that's never our goal. Can I say the people that, that even in the 21 years that I have been here, the people that we've seen come and go, none of them ever come back and say, yep, I'm just back for a short time. I'm just, I'm just back here for a couple months, Brother Donald, and, and, and we're going to go on about our way here in a little bit. No. It happens over time. You see it, they come back, or even those that came and, and just for the first time. You see them all but miss a Wednesday night every now and then, and then a Sunday night, and then a Sunday and a Wednesday, and before you know it, they're gone completely. How many times, how easy is it, and this is something that I found, if you have somebody you want to text or just somebody you want to be, show, be nice to and, be, and, and just trying to encourage them and, and things like that, how easy is it, Brother Phil, that, that one day you just get so crazy busy and you just don't read the Bible? And then all of a sudden, the second day, you don't do it. And then by the third day, it's pretty easy. By the fourth day, it's pretty easy. Can I say, and you, you can lie to me if you want, that's fine. It, I might be the only person in here. How easy was it back in 2020, setting home, it was not the same as being here. Look, I, I wanted to come to church. Don't get me wrong. But when you sit back and it's like, boy, it was, I could get up, sit in my pajamas and, and watch service, and I didn't have to get up at, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock, Brother Ed. I could get up at, you know, 9.45 and flip on YouTube, and that was super easy. I never sleep till 9.45. I have a wife that won't let you sleep that late much. Later. But how easy was it, Brother Donald, to just say, yeah, we could just stay home and watch? How easy is it then? Because even now, you'll have people, and I, I'm hoping nobody's watching. If you're watching and this is the case tonight, I am very sorry. How many times do we use that as an excuse? Well, I don't feel great tonight, so instead of going to church, I'm just going to stay home and watch. And then all of a sudden, the next time, it's even easier. And then the next time, it's even easier. Why? Because we're leaning the wrong way, and before you know it, you get completely sunken. Before you know it, it's like, oh, I'm just going to dabble in this a little, before you're way far in over your head, farther than what you ever intended to be. When we're leaning the wrong way. If this young man, if he had been really involved in the preaching, even if he had fallen asleep, even if he was really involved at some point and just leaning in, Brother Clint, even if he did fall asleep, he still would have fell in instead of falling out. But too many times we're not all in and involved. And as soon as we, when we're leaning the wrong way, as soon as we start to drift off, we immediately fall out. Because it's easy. Because it's easy to get out because we've already taken all these steps beforehand. See, we, we've already had everything leaning up to that. Sin doesn't bother us. It didn't bother us, the little bit of stuff that we did. We'll listen to the suggestions of the world tell us that, hey, you don't have to come to every service. You don't have to always read your Bible. You don't have to pray. Why do you do all those things? Those things are just, you're, you're some kind of fanatic or something. You don't have to do those things. And we'll do all that kind of stuff, and we become sunken when we're leaning the wrong way. So I ask you tonight, which way are you leaning? Pretty, seems like a pretty simple question. But are we honest with ourselves? How in are we? I started talking at the beginning about some preaching I was listening to today, and he was talking about missionaries. 
And it amazed me missionaries that would give up everything that they had, sell everything they had and go into some of these countries back you know, in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and go to Africa or go to China and go to some of these places and just sell everything they had and go there. There was one missionary, and I wish I could remember his name, and I think he might even be in the book that I had read, and I don't remember his name right now, about men who've seen revival, that he, he went, I, I, I wanted to say it was Africa, I don't remember now for sure, but I think it was Africa, and he went, Brother Jim, and it said that within the first few months they had a son that passed away. And then nobody got saved his first year, or his second year, or his third year, or his fourth year, Brother Phil. And I believe it was all the way till his fourth year before he finally had like two or three people that were saved, and he had another child at that point, and eight months after that child was born, he was dead. How, much, how quickly would we quit? Why? Because we're leaning the wrong way. Now, I understand that would be terrible. And I can, none of us can say what we would do in that situation. But that was somebody that had just sold out and bought in. Right. And then after that, you see these things go on and just, I mean, and just the number of people that were saved. And what had happened, if I'm not getting my stories crossed, well, there was one where there was a, a war between two things, and the guy thought, well, this is it. This is just, this is, there, there, there's nothing, you know, I might as well go home. Now there's a war they're never going to believe. Brother Donald, it took that war then to break them and just seen hundreds upon thousands get saved and get born again. Why? Because he was just totally bought in. See, when we're not totally bought in, we're just leaning the wrong way. We're just leaning out. I almost feel like at times we're just looking for the right reason to get out. It's not a right reason, Brother Phil. I, you know, I, I'm invested enough. It's not a right reason that you say something wrong tonight and make me mad for me to leave. But it might be next week, because next week it might be Brother Peter that says something. And I, I might have thought a lot of Brother Peter, and, and you know what, if he's going to treat me that way, I, I don't need it. Because we're just leaning the wrong way. We're looking to get out rather than looking to get in. Which way are you leaning tonight? Are you leaning in, or are you already leaning out? I'm going to ask Sister Renee and Brother Clint to come get a verse of invitation. I'll invite you to come tonight. Just something you want to pray about. Ask God, which way have you been leaning lately? Have you been looking for, uh, you know, we have the holiday season coming up. And, and look, there, there's nothing wrong. I ain't saying nothing bad about anybody. You want to go visit family, go visit family. But how many times are, are, are we looking now? Hey, I can just use this as an excuse not to come this week. I can use this as an excuse not to come next week. Are we already leaning, looking for a way out? Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you again for this day. Lord, thank you. Thankful for the message you've laid upon my heart. Lord, is help us, Lord, that we examine ourselves and look at ourselves, Lord, and ask ourselves how bought in are we or are we leaning, Lord, already looking to on our way to get out. Lord, I ask you to speak to hearts during this invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.